Well, the sky. How shall we do this? Our light is going to be sort of like this. Our hill is like that. I think they'll have some gray here. Well, that's not very gray. That's okay. All right. Let me just go a little lighter. That's still very blue. But I like the direction of the sky to, to explode from this mountain, from this hilltop. I'd like to think, I think mostly go off in all directions. Not too strong, don't want to draw too much attention to it. But I think that's the idea we're going to go for. So we are working with raw umber and a bit of white right now. Um, It sound like it's some kind of an exciting race. Well, <laughs> it's the slowest, the slowest excitement a person can get. Seeing as I need to carve around these trees a little bit. Again, using the square shouldered flat brush because we need control at the moment to maintain our shapes. too much ultramarine up there because it's ultramarine and white becomes a pretty high chroma. I don't want to draw too much attention to that area. Well, you know, I'll mix in a little bit, but not much. How is that? Eh, it's okay. I'm going to try to avoid going too light to begin with, as usual. into the linseed oil. I want to keep my paint, my layer of paint fairly thin in the sky. Gives me a little more room to be textural as I work my way forward.
Okay. Um, I think I'm going to go into the blues here a little bit as well. I want some kind of an idea you know as to as to where the grays and blues are going to be as they meet up with the hillside because this little job I'm doing now I'd kind of like to get it done and then I can move with more freedom into the sky Blues up here. And we'll get grayer again there. said the trees are not triangles but obviously evergreens when they're viewed from a distance they generally will have the triangular shape as they become as they get closer to you you uh, you need to give them some variety of shape a little bit or they get pretty boring pretty fast But these ones are not the most important important evergreens in the painting. Actually, none of the evergreens are going to be all that important. Okay, I'm going to play with that for a little bit. Well, we don't want straight lines heading off of this hill. I want to give the sky a little bit of interest as well. So I'm using a pretty splayed and worn out brush right now. Um, because I'm not close to other objects where I need a hard line. Um, it's the sky, you know, with a lot of forgiveness. And some of the strokes that I'm going over right now will be gone over again. Maybe a little more accurately, but I will groom the sky uh, once I have once I have it more or less in place. That's good. I like that. I think I'm going to go blue up here again. So I'm just going to add a little yellow ochre and a little bit of a. Um, ultramarine blue to that and a bit of white and a bit of linseed oil whoops that was a bit too much how's that give it a bad gray yeah. not too bad
It's kind of funny, you know, as you're painting this in, you come across shapes that you make some on purpose, some inadvertent, and sometimes I choose to keep some, you know? Like, for example, these three little spots of, of washing that I've left, it's kind of attractive. For me, they're not in the right place, so I'm going to get rid of them. But, you know, sometimes you, you do that and it's, well, that, that looks kind of neat. I think I'll just leave that. Okay, that's good. I'm going to go back to some gray here again. A little more raw umber in there. And a bit of white. Now, in one way, you wouldn't really need to do much more to the sky than that. But I think I will. I think I'll put a little more life in it, a little more, a little more definition to it. But it has movement. It is, you know, it has that feeling of, of sort of coming over our heads. So, uh, it's going in the right direction. So as you can see, I've groomed these clouds. I've gone in with my flat brush and, and done some work to find some edges, went a little darker in areas, a little lighter in areas, intensified the blue in a few areas. It's just more of a cohesive package now. May stay like that, might be done, might not be. I don't have to decide that yet. And it helps that I added a little bit of linseed oil because it's flattened the surface of my paint. So if I have to go over something, it won't be so serious because I won't have to deal with painting over ridges. So now I'm just going to start painting the, this hill, this hill top distance and, and, and you know that which is completely out of the light. Um, I was kind of tempted to go fairly greenish but I think I kind of like the idea of saving the greens until we come closer. So, um, or the stronger greens and golds. Um, so what I've done is I've taken a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of cobalt blue, which of course is makes a green. But then I've added some uh, alizarin crimson to it to uh, to warm it up. And now it's gone a sort of a dirty purple, but I think it's a good color for what I'm doing here. So I'm going to try to get these. this uh, sort of sh what a shadowy side of the hill painted with these colors and I'll be working my way down the hill slowly and going a little bit lighter as we get closer to the foreground Keeping all this muted. And actually, I shouldn't be too concerned with the <coughs> direction of my brush strokes right now. Okay, that's very dark. This this will be quite dark
right? Um, going to go just a hint lighter. Because we're coming a little bit closer now. Trying to provide a little bit, just, just a little design. As we work our way forward. I added a little yellow ochre to my mix so that it would show, well, a hint, just a hint of greenish. I imagine you can see it on the camera. I hope so. I know my, I think my, uh, my memory card in the, in the camera. I don't know if it's losing its mind. It seems as though my videos are getting, uh, are becoming a little blurrier. I could be wrong, but you could you could certainly tell me if, if that's what you uh, if you've been finding that and watching them that they're losing their crispness. You know they've never been great, but then I don't have the most expensive camera either. Maybe I'll just try popping another card in there and see. Okay, um, Yeah, I think that's the direction I would like to take it. A little bit more purple again on this stroke. subtle differences but when you're standing back looking at the completed painting as a whole those subtle distances those subtle differences they may not jump out at you but they're still pretty important they, they serve to all in all um, enrich the, the painting so I've come a little closer now as you can see you know, my darkest is, is along the top, gradually working my way forward. I started back here with a combination of cobalt blue, yellow ochre, lizard and crimson, and I said that already, so I shouldn't repeat it. But as I've come forward, I'm sticking with the same mixture, but I added a little bit of raw umber. And and, and I kept going into the same pile, so the, the cobalt blue kind of faded away. Um, and now we've gone to raw umber, alizarin crimson, and yellow ochre, just a hint of cobalt blue, and then of course a bit of white as we've come as we're coming closer to the, as we're coming closer to ourselves. Now we begin uh, with the fun hill. I don't know how many of these trees will remain. Maybe all of them. Maybe some don't know yet. Um, so yeah, next line is working our way down into here. Again, I've tried to indicate some form of pattern, and to me, this is, and you often see this in, in the area that I'm speaking of, uh, or in the area that I'm painting, um, you will see rock formations just poking through the, the, the grass on the hillside in places, uh, especially when you get higher up on the hills sometimes. So that's kind of what I've got there, just hinting at something, nothing too distinct. I uh, don't know if I'm going to have anything here that way. 
I know that I think uh, yesterday I suggested I may have some juniper bush or something in the foreground. I still don't know. I don't think so. So far I'm just going to go with the grassy hillside working our way up in intensity as we come down to the focal area. All right. I think that uh, there's probably enough, I can probably imbue this area with enough information or enough design to keep it interesting. Um, the value is going to be fairly high, but of course, obviously, um, below this <laughs> is where it becomes even, even higher. So I'm just adding yellow ochre right now, and I think that's going to give uh, give us the idea that uh, if I lay, you know if I do this right if I lay in my color as well it'll help to give us the idea of, of flowing down and, and becoming uh, yeah just becoming that grassy hillside that I'm after things don't always go perfectly but that's okay that's okay we're just gonna we're gonna give it a whirl What I would like to do is overlap that, I bring that line down and maybe cut this one in a little bit. straight line here I may just want to I may want to curve that bring this out a little bit uh, let's see here a little yellow ochre a little raw umber don't get too obnoxious with it don't get too loud and too strong I think that's going to work. I like the idea of, of you know, a, a sort of this is the ridge of this close hill, and then it dips down into a bit of a gully, and then here we have the most prominent shape, and and and, and the most intense light on this hill will be running in a, in a line something like this. Okay, you're you're you're, you're sort of hoping that that the person's line of vision as they look through the painting will be will be drawn sort of in this direction. I suppose I should back up the camera a little bit to illustrate that. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm fussing away here. I may as well just move the camera. videography eh? <laughs> yeah so you know so that we can you can see the shape of it. it's better better of a better angle now but I have a lot of room to play I have so far successfully kept it toned down enough that I can I can become a lot stronger higher chroma higher value as we as we come closer here so you know I'm gonna use the direction of brush stroke and design and where I do not put paint um, to indicate the shape of the hill 
and uh, any rock structure, the way the grass lays, what have you. But I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna leave it at that for today. Thanks for watching again. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.